Hey everyone, we are going to be looking at some example projectile motion problems. These will be math based, so a calculation uh, style question or two. It's a good way to make sure you understand or refresh how to uh, approach these problems, what to look for, as well as a general strategy. I got two problems for you. Of course, the idea should always be, the strategy should always be for you uh, to hit pause, try the problem on your own, and then watch as needed. In the long term, it's not gonna help you at all if you're just sitting back watching passively as I solve these problems. You gotta give it a shot, try it, and to be honest, probably uh, fail at some point and then learn from your mistakes. That's how you really understand how to do all these problems. All right, so let's go to the first question. Mr. Gelb throws a softball horizontally off the 10 meter tall A building with a speed of 12 meters per second. Calculate the speed of the ball when it hits the ground. All right, hit pause, try the problem on your own. In terms of what information is given, we know that it's a 10 meter tall building. I already had it labeled for you. This ball starts off moving horizontally. It has some VX, some initial velocity in the horizontal direction. All right, and we even know what that velocity is, that VX. It's equal to 12 meters per second. What it's asking for is its final velocity upon impact. Notice, it's not asking about VX. It's not asking about VY. It's the overall velocity of the ball. Of course, it's going to follow a projectile uh, motion path, kind of like this. All right, it's going to be diving and hitting the ground at some angle. It wants this velocity that it's striking the ground at. That's what we're trying to solve for. So if we're trying to figure out this velocity right here, I'm going to kind of draw it as a vector right before it hits the ground. Remember, this velocity vector is made up of two other vectors, this velocity in the x direction. And I'm going to switch colors to stay organized the velocity in the y direction. Once I know Vx and Vy, I can use Pythagorean theorem, the Pythagorean theorem, that V squared equals Vx squared plus Vy squared to solve for what I'm looking for, this velocity here, this impact speed. So really what I'm going to try and do in this problem is figure out what Vx is, figure out what Vy is right before impact, and then set up this Pythagorean theorem. So let's start with Vx. Well, that's easy. I know what the velocity in the x direction is. It's simply 12 meters per second. Remember, Vx is constant. It's not changing in this problem. So I already know this, check mark. All I need to know now is the velocity it has in the y direction right before impact, and then I can set up Pythagorean theorem to solve for what it's asking. Okay, I know the ball is falling 10 meters. It doesn't give me anything about time, but it does say the ball is being launched in the horizontal direction. So in the beginning, the initial vertical velocity must be zero meters per second. I know it's going to fall. It's going to move downwards 10 meters. And I know it has an acceleration of g, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So you look through our equations. There's three main equations that we use to solve for things in the vertical direction for projectile motion. It turns out the easiest, though not the only one, is this one. Vy squared equals Vy naught squared plus 2 times g times delta y. Well, Vy naught is 0, plus 2 times negative 9.8, negative 10. That gives me that Vy squared is equal to. Well, if you multiply that out, that's going to give you 196. So Vy, take the square root of 196. Well, that's convenient. It's exactly 14 meters per second. So I know Vy. I know Vx from the problem. Let's use our Pythagorean theorem. So V squared equals Vx squared plus Vy squared. 
That equals, here we go, 12 squared plus 14 squared. Well, 12 squared is 144. 14 squared, we actually already did it right over here, is 196. You add all that up, you get 340. But that's equal to v squared. So v is the square root of that. I'm going to erase this right here just so it's no longer in my way. So v is the square root of 340. Plug that into your calculator. I got an answer of 18.4 maybe a little more, maybe a little less, depending on rounding, meters per second. That is the impact speed, this speed right here, right as it's striking the ground, 18.4 meters per second. All right, that's example one. Let's read over example problem two. A cannon fires a ball horizontally off a cliff. The cliff is 25 meters tall and the ball lands 80 meters away from the base of the cliff. Calculate the launch speed of the cannonball. Hit pause, try the problem. All right, in terms of info I know, I'm gonna label a few things. I know that the height, let me get my pen going. I know that the height is 25 meters tall there's 25 meters. And I know the cannon lands somewhere away from the base. Let's say it hits right here. So it's going through this projectile motion pass. Sorry for my poor drawing abilities. Hits right here. And this distance away from here to here, it says is 80 meters. Okay, that's why I know. It also tells me the ball is launched horizontally. So again, it's going to have some initial velocity in the x direction. Its initial velocity in the y direction is zero because it's fired horizontally. Those are the things I know. Like the last problem, it's asking for a speed, but this time it's asking for the launch speed of the cannonball, not the impact speed. It doesn't want here. It's actually asking for this v x, this initial speed in the x direction, which of course is the only speed it has right at the beginning. So that's what we're going to try and solve for. All right. Remember that for projectile motion, this velocity in the horizontal direction is staying constant. I'm going to flip over to a pen. How about purple? Well, since it's constant, since there's no acceleration, I have one single equation vx equals x over t. Technically, it's delta x over delta t, but I'm lazy. Well, I know how far it travels in the horizontal direction. That's this right here. Okay, it has a displacement of 80 meters. So I'm already halfway to solving for that launch speed. Unfortunately, nowhere in the problem does it give me the time. So if I want to figure out Vx at launch speed, I need to know the time the projectile is in the air. Well, this is the only equation I have in the horizontal direction, and I don't know time. To figure out time, I'm going to look in the vertical direction. Remember, time's a scalar. And if you think of the problem, the time it takes to fall down the cliff vertically is also how much time it has to move horizontal. Time is often interchanged between our two dimensions. That's the handy, convenient thing we can use in both cases. So I'm going to look in the vertical direction to try and figure out the time. So let's see, what equation could we possibly use that would allow me to solve for time in the vertical direction? Hmm. Well, one equation pops out. I know how far down the projectile is falling. Delta y is equal to v initial in the y direction times t plus 1 half g t squared. I know it falls 25 meters. So it's falling 25 meters downward. Again, I'm normally, or like normally, I'm going to say up is positive. Therefore, it's falling down 25 meters. This will be our starting point. Well, its initial vertical velocity is zero, so zero times time is zero, plus one half 
negative 9.8, that's g, times t squared. Aha, now I can solve for t. Notice, I'm not going to be taking the square root of a negative because I have a negative height. It falls downward and a negative acceleration. You multiply both sides by 2, that gives you a negative 50. Divide by 9.8 or negative 9.8. You take the square root of that. I get a time equal to, once you plug it into your calculator, about 2.26 seconds. So that's how much time it took to fall downward. Again, therefore, that's the amount of time it has to travel horizontally. So just so we're a little color coordinated, this here is going to be my time right there. So that's going to equal 80 meters divided by a time of 2.26 seconds. Punch that into your calculator, 80 divided by 2.26. I get an initial horizontal velocity of 35.4 meters per second. That's the velocity in the x direction. And because it was only fired in the x direction, that is the launch speed of that cannonball. Okay, there are two relatively quick uh, example math problems for projectile motion. 